Okay, hi Unit 200 class. I'm here with an R challenge video. Well, the R challenge is creating a portrait and instead of using regular paints or markers or crayons of that sort, I'm going to be using makeup products instead. And I do use some markers towards the end, but doesn't matter. Let's get into it. I'm going to be working on a purple look for this portrait and um the way that we're going to be going about it is, like I said, we're going to be using makeup and I am starting with basic pencil for here and I'm going to be just painting over it with foundation and some concealer and adding eyeshadow to it along with a lot of glittery products. The reason that we're going to be going with purple for today is because we're going to be talking about um, the relation between the color purple and also its impact on the general LGBT and queer community history. Cool. So to start, we're going to differentiate the, um, the different colors of purple, lavender, and violet. Purple is more to represent the spirituality of the flag uh, or of the community as stated by Gilbert Baker in Leanne Melendez's interview with him for ABC News San Francisco. Baker had described the purple stripe of the Rainbow Pride flag that, they, that he had originally made to represent the spirituality of the general community. A bunch of lavender themed monikers are named as such because lavender is more representative of queer sexuality. It's been using connotation with homosexuality being a condition. Some examples that we're going to look into are going to be this lavender scare as well as the lavender menace and towards the end lavender, the concept of lavender linguistics. Violet is a reference to the flower, which has become the more prominent physical and tangible symbol towards the LGBT community, specifically because of the fact that it's been um, traced back to Sappho writing poems about her tri uh, her tributes to Aphrodite by give by presenting violets to her, and in in his article, Girl Interrupted, how gay was Sappho? Daniel Mendelssohn talks a bit about how the moniker Sap sapphic and sapphicism that has relating to the culture of women loving women in general not specific to not mutually exclusive to just women who are attracted solely to other women but can include bisexual women and trans women non-binary women this moniker has been attributed to sappho because of her homoerotic undertones in her poetry the exchanging of violets has also been traced back to Sappho in their article, Violets and Van Damme. Barbara cohen Strainer has talked about Edward Bourdais' play, The Captive, in which two lesbian lovers are exchanging garlands of violets. Something that's also been repeated throughout LGBT history is, is the tendency to reclaim terms that have once inflicted damage upon people for the sake of them being queer, lesbian, gay, bi, or trans. Dr. Peg Lanfear, as well as Dr. Roseanne Welch, have written about the la lavender menace and its origins. The reason that this term became so well known within the lesbian community is because of the fact that the general feminist movement of the 1960s had used this term against the lesbian feminist movement because of the, th the perceived threat that they brought on to the bigger movement. This was because the lesbian feminist movement had brought sexuality to the forefront of this movement rather than focusing on the gender aspect of it and the calling for women's rights. And rather than it slowing down the lesbian feminist movement, they used the term la the lavender menace to attribute to themselves and use it as a driving force into bringing their themselves into the larger audience. A more modern and contemporary take on this um, healing aspect of reclamation or the Gezi protests that have been taking place in Istanbul, Turkey. Women have been finding new leadership roles in society and their presence in these positions have been creating a threat to the male dominating nature that has reigned over Istanbul. Protesters have used the purple flower, most likely the violet flower, to create a symbol for the larger progressive movement. Hande S. Lenzia as well as Etier Earhart have described how many of the protesters use the purple flower as a rhetoric to themselves, claiming that they rebel for freedom, just like the purple flower blooming in the streets 
despite being perceived as delicate as well as similar to this purple flower this instead has allowed them to blossom beyond adversity as mentioned earlier lavender has been really attributed to homosexuality being a condition and naoko Bosawa really hits in on this in their in her explanation of the lavender menace where gay members of congress and also gay government workers were easy were perceived to have been easily manipulated and could be blackmailed by the soviets despite the fact that there was never any evidence of any of this happening to a, a single member of a gay congressman or government worker purple's queer connotation is not limited to homosexuality however it has been attributed to bisexuality in which michael page the creator of the bisexual pride flag had mentioned in a previous blog post that said many members of the bi community did not feel a connection a strong connection to the gay pride flag because of the fact that it did not put emphasis on the blurring aspect to their identity and the fact that they identified partly with the homosexual community as well as the heterosexual community in terms of sexuality as well as their presence in outward society Purple also has a prominent role in the genderqueer and non-binary pride flags. Kai Rowan, the creator of the non-binary flag, included the purple stripe to represent the flexibility and gender expression, which is indicative of the general non-binary community. While Rowan associates the color with the fluid nature of identifying as male, female, or some variant of in between, Marilyn Roxy associates lavender with inherent queerness. They claim that it, the blending of traditional pink and blue colors that were intended for men and women are meant to represent androgyny. This aspect unique to the genderqueer community refers to the newly created character that draws from bl the blurring of male and female attributes while still acting independently of the two. The purple stripe in reference to the rainbow pride flag is important, however, the connotation it carries with a different weight for the bisexual, genderqueer, and non-binary pride flags is more unique to those experiences. The page sums this up really well in that the nuances work together to uphold the larger importance to the LGBT community, however, they have to uphold their own unique component, in the, which is in reference to the color's general meaning. The color has also been attributed to a very important component of the LGBT history in the gay literature movement. David Bergman writes about the violet quill and quotes Alfred Kingsley in saying that sexual, sexual orientation is more along of a fluid continuum. And the extent of the violet quill's work has allowed for the creation of a gay community. With literature being put out by a group of people who do identify as gay and queer into the real world people who are in the closet who do not feel the sense of community could cling on to these works Rosalie Talib and Camelia Sadeki better explain this in their character analyzation of the color purple written by Alice Walker they summarize that Sally the main character of the book rises past trials and tribulations of growing up after being sexually abused by her stepfather and then the having to endure the destructive nature of this relationship is subsequently ingrained into her marriage to an emos emotionally estranged husband. However, Talif and Sadehi find that it is with Sally's relationship with her female friend, Shug. She is given the opportunity to resist the suffering and pain and find her own path because of her relationship with women. The reason that queer literature is so important is because it offers a sense of home and belonging in polarizing times that are enabled by people that are even themselves identifying as gay or queer, but have not made the full transition to get out of the closet. These people tend to seek out content through various forms of media that either portray characters like them in a positive manner or are written by other queer creators. It normalizes their own experiences and assures them that being LGBT or being queer isn't wrong or inherently strange. There's also the creation of a kinship bond that is similar to that of family and friends because there are other individuals who have gone through these unique experiences only other queer people can really relate to. So we're getting to the end to this stupid painting. 
it's really important to say that the point of this video and the point of this Bowie Silver wasn't to say that purple should be used instead of the general rainbow pride flag. I think that they should be used alongside of each other because I think that purple really fills in the gaps and addresses the nuances that the original rainbow pride flag doesn't really cover. I think that once this idea is um, more accepted by the larger LGBTQ community, we can conduct research from the lens of those that are being absorbed in that sense saying that we should have more LGBT slash queer researchers looking at stuff like what Hong Chi Xiao describes as lavender ma mandarin. It's the stylized linguistics that gay Taiwanese culture has broken down further into kinship opera, geisha memoir, as well as celebrity stardom. I think that the larger connection between queer vernacular as well as how important language is to communication and society, that is going to really propel queer studies into the forefront of the mainstream society. Overall, I hope that this has led you to think that at, in some degree, Purple has been able to paint a brighter picture of how society works, so that way it needs to be taken more seriously. And that's it. It only took an hour or two paint this and it you know it, it doesn't look great but it's it was fun to do wish you all the best on your finals good luck i believe in you